Hey, online people. i got a real simple lab called Momentum. Lab number 12 is Momentum. Here's what you do. You tie one of the string ends on one of the carts, tie the other end onto the other cart. Uh, my mass of my carts, the one with the spring, is 606, and the other one's 646.6. I don't know why the one without the spring weighs more. But those things you could hang on your spring scale. You can hang on your spring scale and find out what the... Uh, mass of your guys are because uh, the spring scale goes to a thousand grams so you should be able to get those so you need the mass of the carts and then you got to grab some of your mass set and here's what we're doing we're going to actually run a momentum experiment but because we don't have two ticker tape timers we don't know how fast these things are going to be after an explosion so let me set this thing up and get it ready for an explosion all right, here's what I did. I sprung the spring so I locked it in place, and I hooked the string onto the two ends like I had said, and I have both carts that are completely empty. I think you're going to need a friend to help you with this one because it's a little tricky. What I did was I stuck the um, tape measure right at the 100, which means there's one meter going that way and one meter going that way. And what you're going to need is a friend that's going to read where this part of the cart is when the spring gets sprung where the cart is because you need to know that distance from the hundred mark and then the other guy's distance from the hundred mark all right what we're going to try to do is take data on how far it went you see i don't know how fast it went but how far it went if the string is attached both carts are going to stop at the same time so momentum and i know you read this chapter is mass times how fast the carts are moving. Well, how can you tell how fast the carts are moving if we don't have a radar gun and, and we don't have two ticker tape timers? Here's what you do. Both carts are going to stop at the exact same time when the string gets tight. So the distance the cart goes divided by that time before the string gets tight and the distance this cart goes divided by the time before the string gets tight is the velocity. Mass times velocity, momentum. We're out to prove that the momentum before the explosion equals the momentum after the explosion. And the momentum before the explosion is totally zero. So the momentum after the explosion has to be zero. If that's true, what can you say about the momentum of this cart going that way and the momentum vectorally added to that of the other cart going the other way? What do they have to add up to be? Zero. The only way that could be true is if the momentum of this cart that way equals the momentum of this cart the opposite way. Vectors in opposite directions subtract, and if they're equal, they add up to be zero. All right, so let's run that. All right, so we're going to want to hit it and try to hit it straight down so it's released. All right, now, when those things flew out, hard for me to videotape with nobody helping me today. When those things flew out, one cart flew and maybe landed right there, and you're going to have to have somebody like you read 158 or whatever that line is, where the other cart moved and might have went to 21 or whatever that was. Okay? It's a great way to check your work because if you know the total length of the string, you should be able to check your numbers and see if you should just run that trial over again because you got bad data. And, uh, do that with the carts completely empty. Then, let's do another trial. This time, what I want you to do is add 500 grams to one of the carts. I put it on that one. I would suggest you put it on, I call that cart one. So it's this mass plus another 500. Run that trial again. You're going to find something really kind of cool. The momentum equals the momentum, but the speeds won't be the speeds because the more mass you have, the less speed you got. Very cool. All right, when you're done with one 500 mass, then you go to a 1,000, that's two, and then 1,500, and then I think you have two 200s and a 100 to make it a total. So you can run four trials. One with both empty, one with 500, one with 1,000, 1,500, and then a total of 2,000 plus the cart and the other cart empty. If you want to have some fun, um, do something like that. 
for the next trial. So there's a little bit of a of a difference. All right. You actually do a thousand, a thousand if you want. Either one. Have some fun with the last trial. All right. See if I can get an Excel document with you and a little bit of a write up for you. And, all right, and this is a small lab. All you really have to do is write me a paragraph describing the conservation of momentum and why this thing would even work. Then you're going to compare the mathematical prediction with the actual data and see how close you got to what you would have expected it to be if you had that known mass and that known mass being projected by a spring. And then a paragraph just describing uh, how well you do based on that percent error. Um, if you only have one person, that would be you, uh, trigger the thing and mark where one cart ended, where it started and where it ended, and then put that cart there at the end point and stretch out the string and then you'll know where the other cart was. Okay, so try that. Uh, I put an Excel document online that's got a little bit of a write-up or a little bit of a background theory uh, handout to it and then also an Excel document so that you can compare um, the momentum before and the momentum after and what you should have got and what you did get and uh, things like that. So uh, have some fun with it. Write me a little paragraph at the end to tell me what you think about and what you did and how you could um, improve. Also answer those questions in the data part on the Excel document. Alright, thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.